Hey guys, Proper English here. So last time I showed you how to build a RAM cell and taught you about the basic principles behind how it works. Today what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit fancier with our RAM cell and we're going to take a look at how to build a whole array of RAM and why RAM is useful. So let's get started. All right, so today we're going to be getting a little bit fancier with our RAM cell. Now, if you remember last time, I told you that RAM has two functions. It's got a write function, that's saving the data to the RAM cell, and it's got a read function, which is outputting the data in a controlled fashion. And so in this particular cell, we've got two reads instead of one. And that can be super useful. First, let's take a look at the two reads functioning independently. Okay, and so right now I've got a one saved to our D flip flop over here. And I should remind you that when we have a zero saved to the memory cell, we're calling that a one because we're working with an inverted system here. All right, and so when I flip this lever, well, now this read, our first read is outputting a one, but our bottom read hasn't changed. And so I can turn this off and I can read from down here too. And now the top reads off, but our second read over here is on. And so if I had a couple of cells lined up over here, we could be reading from the top read in this one and the bottom read over here and any combination. You know, we could we could have a bunch of them and be reading any any from any two cells at once. And that's super useful when we're building a CPU because a lot of the time that's exactly what we want. It's faster if we read two things at once because well, let's take a look at this diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this black wool over here our ALU. And we're going to learn about ALUs very soon. But right now, the thing to know is that an ALU is an arithmetic logic unit. In a CPU, it does all the math and the logic. So it can add, subtract, and do things like AND, OR, NOR, XNOR, XOR, all of those things. And so we like to send data from the RAM over to the ALU. And so our RAM is this over here. And when we're sending data over, well, we're usually going to be sending two pieces of data at once, an A input and a B input for the ALU. But if we only have one read coming from the RAM, we have to send the data twice, right? We need to send it once for A and once for B. But if we have two reads, we can send them both at the exact same time and things get quite a bit faster. And so that is why we use dual read RAM. So let's take a look at how I've set up this second read. All right, so before we get into how our second read is set up, let's just do a quick reminder of how the first read is set up because they're gonna work the exact same way. They're just set up a little bit differently because you know we're stacking them vertically. And so over here, this torch is the output of our first read. And so when we've saved a one to this memory cell, when the memory cell is off, one input to this torch is off. And so it's not getting powered from this side. But right now, because we're not saying to read, well, this torch is still on and it's holding our read off. But if I flip this and say to read the data, well, now the torch can turn on because we've got a one over here, okay? We've got a one saved to our memory cell and we're saying to read that one. And now if we come down here, we've got the exact same thing set up for our second read, except we're using this piston over here. And so this is the memory cell input to our read, okay? And so because this cell is off, well, this piston's retracted, and so this torch cannot power this torch, that means if I say to read from our second read, well, now there's no input here, it's a zero there, and the read is on, so it's a zero over here, and so we're seeing an output of one because we've saved the one. And so now we can take a look at the other situation. We can save a zero to our memory cell, okay, and so remember that's turning the memory cell on. And so now this piston over here is extended, and we're getting power from this torch going over here to this torch. And so now, even if I say to read, well, this torch gets held off from this, okay? Because we've saved a zero to our memory cell. 
And so that is how the second read works. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we set up a full array, and I think you'll get a good picture of why two reads can be super useful. All right, so now that we've gone through what RAM is, how it works, and what dual read RAM is, let's take a look at an array of dual read RAM. And so the first thing we should do is take a look at how this is all set up. So we've got four bits here. Each one of these is a bit, and this is too wide, so it's nice and compact. And now if we come along this way, we call these registers, okay? So this is register zero. This is register one, two, and three. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to start by writing data to register zero. And we'll save a five there, okay? So this is all in binary, remember that. We've got a zero, one, zero, one. So that's four and one is five. And so we're gonna come over here, this button is a write. And so we'll write that to register zero. And so now we've saved that to the memory. Okay, and so let's save something else to register one. How about we'll do a six? Okay, so zero, one, one, zero. So four and two is six. And so we'll come over to register one and we'll write that to our register. And so now we can take a look at our reads. And actually, let's turn these guys off. And so the output from our reads is over here, okay? And right now we're not seeing anything because we're not reading anything, but if I come over here, let's read from the first read of register zero, and we'll read from the second read of register one. And so now when we come over here, we can see we've got our five in our first read, and our six down here in the second read. And that's exactly what we wanna see. We are sending two pieces of data from this RAM array at the same time, and that's awesome. That means we can send these over to an ALU and do whatever we want to process that data. And yeah, there you go. That is a RAM array and that's how it works. Now, when I told you what RAM was, I mentioned that one of the things that is important about RAM is that you're able to access the data in any random order and that it's going to take about the same amount of time to get to that data no matter where it is in the RAM. And I think you can kind of start to see that with this array here. Okay, so I can access something from register 0, I can access something from register 1, I can access something over here from register three and it's all going to take about the same amount of time. Now we've got a little bit of delay from this repeater over here but that's really not that big of a deal and that is why this is RAM. Okay so that's where the whole random access thing comes into play and what RAM actually is. And so yeah we're going to get to using this very soon but for now you've learned what RAM is, what a RAM array is and how this all works and that's pretty cool. This is a component for a CPU so you're on your way to learning how to build a CPU. So that's pretty cool. I hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time.